Hello and good afternoon. CSI 158 section 841 and 847 students for the second eight week term during the spring semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the routing and switching essentials course. And today's packet tracer tutorial will be on packet tracer activity 3.2.2.4. And this is, as you can see from the topology, definitely a continuation from packet tracer activity 3.2.1.7 and what we're going to be doing here is we're going to verify some VLANs and configure trunks you've got your addressing table and the background is informing you that you need to have trunks to pass multiple VLANs or VLAN information between switches so what we're going to do first is we're going to verify the VLANs and this is what we did on the previous packet tracer activity 3.2.1.7 so if I do a show VLAN, you can see we still have our faculty, staff, our students, our guest default, and our management native. So VLANs 10, 20, 30, and 99. All right. On switch 2 and switch 3, let's check and see what information we have there. And it should be created for us. And sure enough, it is. So we're not going to have to create that this time. Again, the purpose of this packet tracer activity is going to be to focus in on the creation of the trunk links which we did at the end of the last packet tracer activity in order to prove that we could provide that connectivity. Alright so verify loss of connectivity between PCs on the same network and so this is kind of where we ended the last packet tracer 3.2.1.7 before we went into a, a little troubleshooting and configuration to facilitate the, con uh, the connectivity between the different PCs that are in the same VLAN. So we're going to ping 172.17.10.24 <clears throat> excuse me and we're going to see here that this is not going to work and so very similar to 3217 that packet tracer activity it looks like we're going to have to configure some trunk links. So we're going to go to switch one first and it says configure gig 11 and gig 12 on switch 1 for trunking. So again, we'll go from user exec to privilege exec into global config mode, and then we'll go into interface. And we're going to go ahead and specify a range here 11 to 12 because we're going to be adding some of the same information. So we're going to do a switch port mode trunk. You can see it's going to take those interfaces down and then bring them right back up. We're going to do a switch port trunk native VLAN 99 and that's step number two so configure VLAN 99 is the native VLAN and the note here is important it says the trunk port takes about a minute to become active due to spanning tree which you're gonna learn about in the, in the in some chapters that are gonna take place later on in the course so it says you can click fast forward time to speed the process up but that's okay so after the ports become active you're periodically gonna receive the following messages so now we're going to start receiving those messages because we have configured the native VLAN on switch 1 on the two trunk ports to be 99. Now that is not the native VLAN on switches 2 and 3. So it, as our previous video displayed, we should start receiving messages here in about 30 to 60 seconds. So it says, although you have a, although you have a native VLAN mismatch, pings between the PCs on the same VLAN are now successful why and this is a very interesting question very important question to understand because there are different modes that the ports are in by default and so when we do and there are our error messages so I'm going to type in and I'm going to save our configuration so we'll continue to see those messages sporadically here so if I type show interfaces trunk this is going to show me the interfaces which are set to be trunks. So gig 1, 1, and 1, 2, which we just forced into trunking mode by doing the switch port mode trunk. So you can see that the mode is on, right? It's on in both cases. The encapsulation is 802.1Q, and the status is that they're trunking, and their native VLAN is 99. So it says, although we have the mismatch here, we can still ping. So let's try that right now. So if I type in ping 172.17.10.21, you can see that the ping works. 
However, we haven't configured anything on switch 2 or switch 3. But that's okay, we don't have to configure anything on those ports because by default, these switches, and let's go ahead and pull switch 2 up, and you can see that switch 2 is also receiving the same native VLAN mismatch errors. So if I do a show VLAN, you can see we have all the VLANs there. I'll go from user exec into privilege exec. And so if I type a show version, the type of switch is a 2960 switch. And you'll remember from the reading that it indicated that the default configuration on the ports is auto. So if I do a show interfaces trunk, you'll see that the gig 11 interface on switch 2 is set to auto. So if one side of the trunk link is forced into trunking mode, and that's what we did on switch 1 with the switch port uh, mode trunk, when we change that port to a trunk, we're forcing the trunk mode, and that's why it says on. If the other side or the other end of that trunk link, that port, is in auto mode, it will auto negotiate and form the trunk. And so you could see that's what the N in the encapsulation type represents, that it negotiated 802.1Q. Not that it was forced into using 802.1Q, but that it negotiated that with the other end of the link. The status is trunking, and as you can see here, our native VLAN is 1. And so that's a problem. That's why we're receiving these messages here. So native VLAN mismatch discovered on Gigabit Ethernet 1.1, and then in parentheses is our VLAN, and it says with switch 1 on gig 1.1, which is using VLAN 99. All right. So that's why we can still ping across, even though there's a native VLAN mismatch, because by default, the 2960 ports have been set to auto-negotiate a trunking link if the other end is also trying to go ahead and force that trunk link to be established. And there's a very nice table in the text that shows you the different modes of the port, whether it's dynamic, desirable, or auto. And in fact, on some of the older switches, and these are, if I do a show version. These are two 3550, or this is a 3550 switch here. So a much older switch, right? If I do a show run, you can see that by default, and let's get through this mess here, you can see that by default on a 3550 switch that the switch port mode is dynamic desirable, right? So on the older switches, the modes are different than they are on your current switches. Okay, so that explains why the trunk link successfully established itself. It also explains why we're able to now ping from VLAN 10 on one side of our network to VLAN 10 on the other side of our network. All right, so step number two. So it says verified trunking is enabled on switch two and switch three. So we're on switch two. And by doing the show interfaces trunk, you can see that trunking is set up. But what we want to do here is we're going to go ahead and clean up switch two a little bit. We'll go into interface gigabit ether, excuse me, ethernet one one. And I'm going to force this to switch port mode trunk. I'm also going to do switch port trunk uh, native VLAN 99. And that way it'll match and we'll stop seeing those error messages. Okay. And again, the spanning tree, it says unblocking consistent port, unblocking gig 11 on VLAN 001. Port consistency has been restored. And again, it was restored because we've gotten rid of the native VLAN mismatch. All right. So the native VLAN mismatch has been resolved. Switch 2 is now set up to force trunking into the on mode for that port. So if I do a show interfaces, whoops, show interfaces trunk you'll now see that the encapsulation is no longer negotiated. It's actually set to 802.1Q and our mode is now on, not auto. All right, so switch two is good to go. So we'll save our config here on switch two and we'll come over here to switch number three. And as you would expect or anticipate, switch three with quite a few error messages. So from user exec into privilege exec, if I do a show interfaces trunk, 
again, you can see our mode here on gig one, two is auto, right? And again, the N means that it has negotiated 802.1Q with the other end of that link, which is on switch one. But we still have a native VLAN mismatch. And remember, while I'm configuring this interface here, something key to remember is you want to make sure that the native VLAN that you're using on your trunk links is not being used for uh, access ports or it's not being used somewhere else in your network. You want to make sure that whatever that native VLAN is going to be on all of your trunk links that it is uh, mutually exclusive from all of the other VLANs that are in your network architecture. All right, so we'll go to Gigabit Ethernet 1.2. We're going to do switch port mode trunk. And then we're going to do switch port trunk VLAN, oh, sorry, native VLAN 99. And then that is also going to give us that spanning tree error. Shows that the inconsistency has now been unblocked, right, for VLAN 01. Everything is restored, so we'll type end. If I do a show interfaces trunk, the mode is now on because again, we when you do the switch port mode trunk command, it turns the trunk port on, right? Forces it into a trunk mode, and our encapsulation is now set to 802.1Q. All right, so I'm going to save my configuration. So let's come back here. It says which active VLANs are allowed across the trunk. So if I take a look at switch three again. You can see here it gives you the VLANs allowed on the trunk are 1 to 1,005. So the VLANs allowed and active in the management domain are 1, 10, 20, 30, and 99. And the VLANs in the spanning tree forwarding state and not pruned are 10, 20, and 30. And we haven't talked about spanning tree yet, but we will soon. So it says correct the native VLAN mismatch on switches 2 and 3. And that's what we just did. We've used the show interfaces trunk command. And it says verify configurations on switch two and three. So if you issue the show interface and then the interface, specify the interface and type in the switch port command, you can see that the native VLAN is now 99. So let's go ahead and do that. On switch number three, we'll type in, and this is another great command. And so show V, oh, sorry, show interface, and we'll say um, GI 1 2 switch port. And this is a great command to give you a lot of information about what a specific port looks like and what it's doing. So you can see here that the switch port is enabled, the administrative mode is trunk, the operational mode is trunk, the encapsulation is dot one q, negotiation of trunking is on, and you can see here access mode VLAN, it says one is the default. So the trunking native mode VLAN so if a, a host were to be plugged in, it would be in VLAN 1. If this was not a trunk port, by default it would be VLAN 1. But the trunking native mode VLAN is 99, right? There's no voice VLAN here, and it gives us some additional information below. But again, the key information is to confirm that the switch port's enabled, the administrative and operational mode of that switch port, and let's take a look at a switch port that is not configured. So let's see what gig 1.1 looks like. So as you can see here, gig 1.1, the switch port's enabled. The default administrative mode that you can see here is dynamic auto, right? So up on a 3550, it's dynamic desirable, but down here on a 2960, the default administrative mode is dynamic auto. Operational mode is down because this port is not up. Nothing's plugged in. The trunking encapsulation is going to be dot one q. The operational trunking encapsulation is going to be native. Negotiation of trunking is on. And here you can see the trunking native mode VLAN is currently one. Because again, this port's not configured. We haven't touched this port. So by default, it's also going to use VLAN one. So let's take a look at a real Cisco switch here. Again, this 3550. And let's run that same command again. So we'll do a show interface and we'll say fast ethernet or I'm sorry show interfaces FA 0 slash 15 and we'll take a look at the switch port output alright so we'll list it all out here so as you can see the switch ports enabled again the administrative mode is dynamic desirable okay the operational mode is trunk 
and the trunking encapsulation, since this is an older switch, it uses ISL, which is Cisco proprietary and is not used on newer hardware. In fact, this has been deprecated. Uh, 802.1Q is the open standard, and that is what you should be using today. So negotiation of trunking is on. Same thing, access mode VLAN is one is the default. Trunking native mode VLAN is also one. But again, key differentiator here, dynamic desirable is the mode, the default mode for the 3550 Cisco Catalyst switch. All right, so we've confirmed all of our connectivity. So it wants us to use the show VLAN command and it asks you here, in the show VLAN command, display information regarding configured VLANs. Why is port gig 11 on switch 2 no longer assigned? Let's jump over to switch 2, but the answer will be the same for all of these switches. Why is that port no longer assigned to VLAN 1? Right? So you'll notice that it's not assigned to VLAN 99. In fact, VLAN 99, remember, that's a trunk port. Or I'm sorry, the native VLAN for our trunk ports, right? But gig 11, which should be right here in between these two ports, is gone. And it does not show up here anymore. And the reason for that, and if I'm not mistaken, at one time, uh, this was a, a very common question that you would be asked uh, on assessments, would be, why does that port not show up here in this output? And the reason that gig 11 does not show up here is because it is a trunk port. And there's gig 11. And so to confirm this, if we look at switch 11, if I do the show VLAN command, you'll notice that in VLAN 1, gig 11 and 12 are both gone. And they don't show up anywhere here. Right? So if you do the show interfaces trunk, there they are. So again, the show VLAN command output, the reason that you do not see ports that are in trunking mode listed under uh, VLAN 1 is because they are trunks. And so those ports will not show up here. Okay, so again, that was this is a quick continuation for uh, the packet tracer activity we previously did, which was 3.2.1.7. Again, uh, this has been for Anne Arundel Community College students taking CSI 158 section 841 and 847 for the second eight-week term, the Routing and Switching Essentials course at Anne Arundel Community College. All right, I hope this video has uh, helped you out, and I will see you this week.